Hi, I'm Kristen Wilson from Index Data, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating some of the features of the ReShare Returnables 1.2 release, along with a demonstration of an end-to-end -end workflow for a request. So the first thing that I'll show is the ability to create a new request uh, manually from within the staff interface. So I could do this by navigating to the request app, and this is where I can see all of the requests that have been placed by patrons from my own library. If I click on the new button, this brings up a screen where I can create a new patron request. And reasons that I might choose to do this would be if um, I was helping a patron and ended up needing to help them place a request, uh, maybe if somebody called on the phone and wanted a request placed. Basically, um, this would fill the need for placing a request when the patron is unable to do it themselves from a patron-facing discovery layer. So in the request information section, I need to enter some information about the requesting user and details of the request. So the first thing that I need to do is to put in uh, the user's library ID number, and this would be the ID number that would be used to look up this user in the local ILS. And right now, I just need to be able to look up that number to, to paste it in or perhaps scan it from a library card. There are some other fields here that I can fill out. I can specify if there's a date uh, when this request is needed by. I have to choose a pickup location, and I'm going to choose Linderman Library. And if I, if I knew that there were more than one volume to this title, I might choose to add uh, some specific volumes as well, but I'll skip that for here. I can also add a note along with this request, and uh, since I'm creating this manually, I might choose to do that. Um, one thing that I could say is, um, you know, suppose I'm helping a patron look for a particular book that should be on the shelf and we couldn't find it. So I'm just going to put in a note here that I've prepared um, that describes the situation and that will be visible by somebody who processes this request once it goes through. The other thing that I need to do is to uh, associate the item that's being requested with this request. And so one of the things that we've implemented here is the ability to populate this information from ReShare's shared index. So that would be a shared consortial catalog uh, that's been built for the consortium using ReShare. And if I click on this button that brings up a search screen, and if I uh, can type in my search and I'll be able to see some titles from my shared index and find what I'm looking for. And I'm gonna choose this title, Art in My Mind by Bell Hooks. And you can see that that automatically fills in all the information that I need for the request. I can type this information in manually if I choose, but in most cases, it's much faster and more accurate to just populate that from the shared index. So go ahead and hit Create Patron Request. And you can see that we now have a request created in the system. And from this point on, this is really no different than a request that might be created from a public discovery layer that a patron would put in themselves. So it's really just an alternate means of getting a request into the system. This request is also demonstrating the other major new feature that we've released for the 1.2 release, and that is the ability to recognize and handle materials that are locally available. So you can see that this has a state of required review locally available. And basically what that means is that um, the system is able to see that South University, which is the requesting library, already has a copy of this title. And so it's kind of flagging this for you so that you can address it um, and, and hopefully help the patron get it faster than if it had to go out and be sourced from another library. And so when a request is available locally, we have a few different options on, on what you can do with that. So one option is just to click this fill locally button, and that basically will just mark the request as locally filled. And at that point, you'll need to do whatever processes are in place at your institution to fill that request in your local ILS. So right now, ReShare unfortunately can't pass any information or automate that process, although that is something we could come back to in the future. The other options for a locally available request, um, one is that we can cancel the request. So you might decide 
that the patron can just go to the library and get this. And so you can click on cancel request and you have the ability to choose some cancellation reasons. And you can also enable a cancellation email notice that will be sent to the patron if their request is canceled. And then finally, um, you can also respond cannot supply to this request, which is basically saying, even though it looks like this is locally available at my institution, uh, I actually don't have it. And so I want somebody else to supply it. And, um, and this is a case too, where as you're researching this, you might go into the detailed view of the request and look at some of the request information. And if I were to do that, I could see this note that I put in earlier, um, you know, that this appears to be missing and that this should be approved for ILL. So if I head back over to my flow view, uh, based on that information, I'm going to choose to respond cannot supply because I do actually want this request to be filled from another library. So I'll click on that button and we can see that that was successful and that this request has now been sent um, and it has a supplier assigned and that's North University, which is one of the other universities in our test consortium. And from here on out, we can go ahead and process the rest of this request. So from here, I'm going to switch to another tab in my browser. Um, and this is just another reshare system. This is the system for North University, so the supplier of this request. And I'll open up the supply app. And this is where we can see all of the requests that North University is supplying to other libraries. And here at the top of the list is this request that we just placed. And so I'll go ahead and open that up. You can see that this request is in a state of awaiting pull slip printing. And if I flip over to the details view, I'm going to scroll down here to our audit trail and just uh, briefly show that this request, um, we can see it was created as a new request. And then we were able to automatically transition it into awaiting pull slip printing. And that was done based on a Z3950 lookup that we did um, for this library that was able to return uh, the location and call number of an available item. And that brings me to um, the last thing that was one of the major uh, focuses of the 1.2 release, which was um, introducing some additional ILS integrations. So uh, with this release, we now support integrations with Folio, Sierra, and Symphony. And so in this example, I'm actually using this uh, test system is set up to work with Lehigh University's Folio test system. And so I'll be able to, as I process the remainder of this request, show how some of our NSIP uh, interactions actually play out in a real ILS. So to do that, I'll move back over to the flow view and continue processing this request. So I'm going to click on print pull slip, and this will bring up uh, a pull slip that I can use uh, both as kind of a, a call slip. So I've got my call number and location here, so I know where to find this item, and also a book band or a slip that can be put into the book and travel with the request. Now that that's printed, the request is in a searching state, and I need to scan the item barcode to fill this request. Uh, since I don't actually have this item here with me, I'm going to move into another tab. And this is actually a folio installation. Uh, it's a test installation for Lehigh University. And I'm going to use this to demonstrate some of the interactions between Reshare and a local system. So I'm here in the inventory app, and I'm going to go ahead and search for um, the title that I am working with are in my mind and bring that up. And so you can see here, um, this is actually coming up a number of times because I've been testing in this system, uh, but we've got one result here that's a little bit uh, more full in terms of its metadata. And this is Lehigh University's actual holding for this title. And so I can open this up and I can see that we have an inventory record for this title with one item record. And I'm just gonna quickly copy that item barcode and then I'll use that to fill the request. So when I scan that, I can see that the request is updated both with the item barcode and a due date. And as we did that action, we were able to do an NSIP checkout in the local ILS, and that provided us with the due date. 
Um, and it also saves the library the work of having to do that as a separate step in the ILS. But to show you how that worked, I'll switch over to uh, the inventory tab again. This is Lehigh University's folio system. And I'm just going to quickly refresh the screen here. And so we can see here that item record that we were just looking at has um, updated its status from available to checked out. And if I open up this item record and scroll down to the availability section, I can see that it's checked out um, and that the borrower is policy. And so that is just a, an account that exists within the system to represent the policy consortium that these types of requests can be checked out to. And we can also see that due date that was supplied to the reshare system. So go back to my supplier view. And from here, I'm just going to mark this request shipped. And now I'm going to move back over to the requesters view. So I'll go ahead and refresh the screen. And I can see now that this has been shipped and that the request record uh, for the requester side has also been updated with the barcode and due date. And now I'm going to mark this request received. And so when I do that, um, this is another interaction with the local ILS. And in this demo, this is a bit artificial because typically the requester and the supplier would be two different libraries using two different ILSs. But since I only have access to one system for testing, um, I'm doing both interactions in the same ILS. So I'm going to go back over to, uh, to Folio and close out of here. And um, you can see I've been kind of accumulating a number of these as I've been testing, but I'm going to open up. I think this is the newest record. Um, so this is a temporary item record that was created in Folio uh, as we received the item in ReShare. And so a few things uh, that you can see here. One, this is just a brief item record with a little bit of metadata, basically just a title. Um, and an ISBN. We can see that it's been assigned to a holdings location for items that were borrowed via the policy program. And we can see the item barcode South 21. Um, if you had noticed, that's actually the same as the request ID in ReShare. So we're able to sort of make a connection there. I can also see that this has a status of page. And if I click on that item record and go down into the availability section, I can see that there is one request active on this item. And so when I click on that, I can see uh, a request for this title and I can see that the request is for uh, myself and that barcode that I put in back at the beginning of the demo when I first placed the request. So basically this kind of automates this whole process so that all the library has to do is scan this item at the CERC desk where it will be picked up and then the patron will receive a hold notice from the local ILS. So ReShare doesn't have to duplicate that whole workflow and the library is able to take advantage of processes that it already has in place. So now moving back to the request. Um, once the, the patron is done with this, uh, the request will come back into ReShare and I just need to mark it returned by the patron and then also mark it returned shipped. And now it will be on its way back to the supplier. And from here, if I go back to the supplier view of the record, I'll just refresh this again. I can see that it's been returned shipped and it's just waiting for me to complete the request. And so I'll go ahead and do that. And then finally, if I go back to Folio once again, I'm going to go back to my inventory app. I need to go back to kind of the real version of this title. And so now I can see the status here has updated again to in transit. Um, and that's just a local preference on the part of Lehigh to account for the fact that this has to travel back to its home location. And so if I want to really close the loop on this, I can copy that item barcode again and go ahead and check the item into Folio. And now I can see it's available again. So we've completed the transaction both on the reshare side and the local ILS side. Thank you for watching this demo. And if you have any questions about Project Reshare or the reshare software, you can write to us at info at projectreshare.org.